All right, what's going on guys? Try back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing my weekly review for this week's episode of Fear the Walking Dead Season 2. This one is for episode 10, which is called Do Not Disturb. And spoiler warning, if you guys have not seen this week's episode yet, you definitely want to watch it before watching this review. No complaints this week. This episode was fantastic. I was very happy near the end of this episode because this one for me, after two episodes, but you know, it's it's kind of the formula that uh, we've talked about in Q&As a little bit, which is that fear sometimes is a little bit of a slow starter. Certain parts of the story, you know, you, you, you have some slower parts, but then it really builds up and it has some awesome stuff in it. So uh, this episode to me was an, an excellent episode. This is one of the best I think uh, they've done when you look at it character-wise. I mean, the things that happen in this episode and the divide that happens between Travis and Chris at the end of this episode. Um, they put a lot of care into this one, even even to the point where uh, we see a zombie that looks a lot like Madison. Um, and of course, we find out afterwards that it isn't her, but at least they put, they put in enough care for us to think when Alicia turns her that maybe it could be, and it's like, oh shit, are we seeing Madison? It was a nice little mini fake out. Now, of course, we don't have to wait three episodes to find out that, uh, thankfully, <laughs> she isn't under a dumpster. Um, <laughs> you know, they show it to us at the end of the episode that it was it was a fake out. You don't have to wonder about it. Madison is alive, and uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna torture you for a few for a few episodes with that. Um, which was good, but okay, let's, let's focus on, all right, let's start from the beginning. So the beginning of the episode, we have the flashback with uh, Oscar and uh, a, the wedding that is going on in the hotel with uh, Alana and uh, Hector, and we have an excellent uh, intro. At first, I was like, am I watching the right show? What the hell is going on here? Uh, but then we can figure out pretty quickly, okay, it's some kind of flashback. It looks like it's in the hotel, and okay, what's, what's going to happen with this? Are these characters going to be important? Why are they showing it to us? And uh, love the intro, love the music. They switch out the music in the intro, so it's not always the same, which I think is really cool. And also the intro for Fear is pretty short. It's just like, burn, burn, and shows you the fear, uh, kind of dripping and dark and everything. Uh, Atticus uh, Ross, I think, did that first season. Uh, he, he's incredible. Nine Inch Nails, love Nine Inch Nails, love uh, the scores that uh, he does with um, with um, uh, Trent uh, Reznor, some of the best scores in movies in that. Uh, Gone Girl, for example, some of the other ones. He's amazing. So the music is awesome. Love the intro. Uh, thought it was really good to kind of uh, get us to uh, understand this character, Alana, her backstory, rather than her just being some random person we run into. She's actually got a backstory. The hotel is, she's kind of got ownership over the hotel. She uh, seems to be the one who was running it, this kind of deal. You've got Hector as well, too. And they had an interesting system going here in the hotel, which uh, one of the things I like most about this episode, it doesn't feel, it feels totally fresh. It doesn't feel like anything we've seen in The Walking Dead. It doesn't feel like anything I've seen before in any zombie apocalypse movies or anything. It's totally fresh. Their system, or what they do, is completely new. They maze trap the zombies in. So they know the terrain so well. They know the hotel so well. They've been able to survive there and do well all this time by pretty much systematically luring the walkers in and then locking them out and then you know using their knowledge to uh, not have to kill them but to actually be able to outmaneuver them and survive for a long period of time since the outbreak just simply by using their intelligence and kind of doing like a puzzle game if you ever played like a puzzle video game something like this uh, maybe you know free games on Facebook or whatever there's lots of addicting games and stuff like that puzzle games that would remind you of this kind of system where you would kind of lure them in block them out go around and then when you get need to get to where you want and just really smart um, um, so I thought that was a really interesting way to go, and I like uh, how the flashback sequence made us understand, you know, right off, right away, how these uh, two groups you have, um, you know, Hector and Alana, and the others with the wife, the surviving wife of the daughter and husband who were killed at the wedding, are kind of uh, in a in a conflict here at the hotel. And now Madison and uh, the others, Strand and 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 um, Alicia, coming in are kind of in the middle of this. So you have two groups at odds with each other, and then you have, of course, all the zombies uh, mixed in. So I. I thought the intro was awesome. I really like this new uh, kind of uh, feel uh, from the, the hotel being a new landscape. We've never seen anything like before in the zombie apocalypse, really. And, uh, you know, I, I, I liked it. I thought it was really intriguing, really interesting. Very, very, very well done. Uh, we had 
a new Negan clip, I Am Everywhere, so that was cool. They're giving us just a little bits and pieces here and there. Uh, we haven't had as many promos this year as we usually do because of the cliffhanger for Walking Dead. But, uh, you know, I Am Everywhere, it's it's a nice little clip, and it gives you a little something each week. You can watch Fear. You can get a, a, a nice little three-second clip from The Walking Dead. Uh, it's enough, I think, uh, for, for many people to tune in. So that was cool in the commercials. Um, then we have uh, Travis and Chris, who are... Pretty much Chris saves the guy, but then he takes the food and then he bolts. And then they, Travis using his skills, because as I said before in the Strongest Survivor video I did last week, I do think Travis is one of the best, the strongest stars, one of the best out of everybody there. And if you look, if you watch this episode carefully and you hear the things he's saying, he is very intelligent. You could even argue he's maybe the most intelligent character we have met so far in any of the Walking Dead series. I mean, all the things he's saying are way ahead of his time in terms of uh, where he's at and what he's doing. Uh, he's talking about, you know, taking the high ground, right? You're, you're art of war, high ground, right? Very smart. He's talking about, you know, finding a well, finding a, some kind of system like a farm, you know, uh, secluded a little bit so you can avoid, you know, uh, groups and people fighting over, scavenging over food and things like that. And you can also avoid, uh, which he doesn't even conceive of yet, which is zombie herds if you're in a very secluded area and on the high ground, there's going to be a lot less chance that zombies are going to march up a hill or something or, you know, uh, you know, find their way there. So very, very smart stuff from from Travis this episode. He also doesn't trust these guys, but it seems like Chris likes them because they're a bit they They seem to be a bit crazy. They seem to be a bit edgy. And Chris is is wants to throw in with that because he actually is more screwed up than they are. And I loved the ending of the episode where the person who shoots the uh, the man who it's his farm. It's his land. And Travis, of course, as a grown man, respects that. And you have another man who has his property, has his land. You go on his land. You have to respect the person's, it's, it's their property. Even in zombie apocalypse, he still, because he has high empathy, because Travis is a very good person, right, uh, towards others. So love Travis. Great character. One of my favorites in the series, for sure. Absolutely. Um, so you've got Chris. So you have a huge divide here. Chris is the one that shoots the guy, not one of the other kind of drunken guys that really doesn't know what to do. And, and it's kind of, they've got the guns and stuff, but they are, they're, they're not quick to pull the trigger. And I really like how they were portrayed, you know, because at first you don't know kind of what you're dealing with with them. Are you dealing with characters that are that are really dark, really brutal? And then we actually find out Fear of the Walking Dead. We're following the group Fear of the Walking Dead, meaning Fear the Survivors. Fear the Walking Dead, referring to the survivors, not referring to the zombies. And Chris is it's like, you know, that's that's him. He's someone to fear already. I mean, he's he's killing the guy and on his property, on his land. You've got the guy like uh, breaking the chicken leg and this kind of stuff. And, um, you know, even Travis, like even with that, he probably say, don't do that. You know, you can leave the chickens and we can eat the eggs. Right. Rather than killing a live chicken, you know. Um, anyway, but uh, really sweet divide between the two of them. Chris goes to give him his hand and Travis is like, no. This is wrong here. So I wouldn't be surprised, and we'll, we'll touch on this more in the predictions video, if Travis decides, you know what, I made a mistake going with Chris. Maybe I'll leave Chris with these guys, let them you know, do their thing. My son is not like me. My son is not. He might be my son, but me and him, in terms of who we are, are polar opposites. You know, I'm a good person. I want to help people. I want to, you know, moral, I have strong morals, strong moral foundation. Some people have it. Some people don't. Right. So um, it's just it's just what it is. So, yeah, man. So so that's going to be really interesting to see how that goes and what and if Travis becomes the leader of this group and or if Chris becomes the leader of this group, possibly. And maybe Travis decides, OK, I'm going to I'm going to leave. Um, wow. Yeah. So so some really interesting stuff there. And I absolutely loved everything that happened with the group and that and uh, even the beans and everything. Really, really fun, really well written and really, really smart. So I loved it and Travis Nick Nick is one of my favorites for sure but maybe Travis is my favorite character in the series now after that uh, but we'll see if he can survive in this kind of world or not I really hope he does at this point and I love what they're doing with the character I think Travis is uh, is great full of hope and you know uh, really smart camping and everything so awesome stuff so back to Alicia and what's going on with that I, I really liked Alicia Debnam Carey's uh, performance in this, this episode I think anytime you get a character that's by themselves or alone in the zombie apocalypse it can be a little tricky. We've had episodes like Still and The Walking Dead where you have kind of Beth and um, uh, and Daryl. And in this one, uh, I thought she did a great job. She was really, really good. And um, 
you know, you even have some new stuff with her working in tandem with uh, Alana, where you, where she goes out onto the balcony, and then they put it, they put the um, uh, the bed sheet across, and then she kind of goes across, and then she grabs her hand, and pulls her in. Same with the elevator shaft. As she goes in the elevator shaft, the zombies come right over, and then she's able to climb up and get into, uh, and then get help from her, and, and then go forward. So. Ah, I really like that. I thought it was really realistic because if you think about it, them by themselves and everything, they haven't killed a lot of zombies yet. They're some pretty big zombies. They're pretty meaty because it's early in the zombie apocalypse, so they're not that decayed. So you know, it is probably best that they that they avoid them if they if they can. They don't. She's got the switchblade, which is cool, but um, and the other girl's got the axe, but uh, pretty smart. So uh, man, so really liked all of that. Thought that uh, everything was good there. Let's see, they called them the wasted, which I thought was kind of funny. And uh, man, yeah, I think that's uh, that's about it. So I thought the hotel was a cool uh, a cool place to see. Uh, you know, the episode was really dark. The exciting, the ending, very very exciting. Really good stuff. They run down and uh, Strand, it seems, is somewhere else. So we don't know him and Madison maybe got separated and. Um, we don't know where uh, where he is right now. Um, but what I'll do, of course, is I'll go through the promo, I'll break it down, and then we'll do a predictions video for what I think is going to happen next week. So love this episode. It's the best of this half so far, in my opinion. Do not disturb. I'm going to give it a 9.2 out of 10. I thought it was amazing all the way through. I thought it was original. I love the development between Chris and Travis. I thought Alicia was really good. I liked the new characters, and all around, it was a killer absolutely killer episode it, it was a great episode for fear we need more episodes like this and i think fear can stand on its own as, as a great series by itself if we keep getting stuff like this one excellent episode excellent so um yeah that'll be it for uh my review for this week i'll see you guys back again uh in about an hour for the uh, the predictions as usual write your comments below guys what did you think about this uh this week's episode did you love it as much as as i did and um also what do you think about uh, the divide between uh, chris and travis you can write your comments below what do you think is going to happen we'll do the uh, predictions soon and um, do you think that they'll stay together do you think that one will change to morph to be closer to the other or uh, how do you think this is going to go so write your comments below guys and uh, if you like the review as usual guys please please thumb it the shit up thumb it up uh, you can also share. you got a Facebook. Click share below. Share through to Facebook. I also appreciate that. And uh, if you're new, subscribe, bottom left, to, to sub. Um, yeah, that'll be it for this one. I'll see you guys back again soon for the predictions. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you liked it. As always, it's Trev, and I'm saying peace. Later, guys. See ya.